Hello, I'm Captain James D. Kirk. And let's start. No way. <clears throat> Not Captain James D. Kirk. I'm Truth Surge. And you're watching Atheist Edge. Welcome to Test Your Religious Knowledge, episode number 16. We've got a good one for you today, folks. Question one. How many years were the Hebrews held captive in Egypt? Even though there is no archaeological evidence to support the captivity at all, how many years were they supposedly there? We have 230, 330, 430, or 530. Again, those are 230, 330, 430, 530. How many years were the Hebrews held captive in Egypt? So I guess this is according to like Exodus or something like that, right? Like, I mean, just, yeah, like, uh, again. I mean, it had to be according to what the Bible says. According to the archaeological evidence, how long were they there? Oh, oh right. That, yeah, that's a trick question, though, because then, <laughs> oh. then that answer would be actually zero, wouldn't it? Like, because oh. no, there was no evidence of that. Like, right. The, yeah. The, the, like, the evidence actually supports that the Jews actually lived beside the Egyptians as, as uh, members of Egyptian society in that era. But, yeah, then uh, were they held captive at that time? No, yeah, we don't, don't know. know. I don't know. What's, what's the most likely number according to the religion that you understand that they were held captive in Egypt? All right, that makes All sense. All right. All right, so number two. According to the Gospel of Thomas, which is actually considered an apocryphal gospel, uh, section 114, the only way for women to get into heaven was to A, become male, B, repent of their lustfulness, C, get permission from their husbands, or D, none of the above, women are not allowed into heaven. <laughs> oh, is this like a Church of Christ thing? Women can't preach? Uh, where, you, you, they should be happy they're allowed to sing in the Church of Christ. What is that, Christ. Matthew? I, uh, a woman should be silent and not assume authority over, over the position of a man? Right. <laughs> what is that, something like that? Man, <clears throat> what was, what was, those lines. What was your like, religious upbringing? Oh, my grandmother was a Catholic, and I, well, she was excommunicated because she got divorced from her first husband, and that was back when you got excommunicated for getting a divorce. That harlot. Uh, I'm sorry, I know this from mom. Yeah, I know. She's such a, a, a troll of, um, but uh, actually, it was, we kind she kind of drifted away from that. It was more, um, at first, Mormon, because uh, her second husband was a Mormon, yeah, but he wasn't like practicing or anything. He never went to temple or anything like that. He would just like say things about God and talk about Mormonism a little bit here and there. Well, about then, you then, like, yeah. So well, me, they, they kind of allowed me to like latch on to whatever like church or whatever I felt like going to at the time. And you wound up atheist. And I wound up, yeah, I know. It's like I, I got to, I, I was given free reign to go and see about all these different Christian denominations, study other religions. Uh, you know, look at these things in school and, and come up with like kind of my own like take on them. Even through high school, probably up until, uh, up until my mid-20s, I would, I would have considered myself like a Southern Baptist. Okay. Um, that so, yeah, was, then you've probably had a lot of this kind of talk of women's role and blah, blah, blah. blah well, yeah. it's weird though, because as atheists, we tend to kind of get this notion that Oh, you know, it's all misogyny, and the the Bible is full of putting down women and 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 being these terrible people to women. Yeah, there's a lot of terrible stuff in the Bible. You know, having to marry a rapist and all that stuff. Yeah, sure. that's that that stuff is in the Bible. It is, but there there are also parts of the Bible too where it says you know things like you know um uh you know men love women like Christ loved the church, which is he was willing to die for them. So they kind of put this like importance too on women in in a sense. But, but then how but it's contradictory right like right. yeah i mean it it, it 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 contradicts itself in so many places as to cease to make any sense whatsoever so right? in the gospel of thomas section 114 the only way for a woman to get into heaven right. is become male repent of their lustfulness get permission from their husband right yeah or none of the above women just are not allowed. <laughs> they're just not allowed yet there's your refresher <clears throat> question three who said the following creationism is an embarrassment a religious superstition that does real harm to children. It's a symptom of willful ignorance and anti-intellectualism that thwarts science progress, scientific progress. 
I don't know if this person said that with that amount of verb. <laughs> flair and verb. Yes, they might not have, because your choices are Richard Dawkins, Bill Nye, Aaron Raw, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think that was something that like sounds like Aaron Raw would say. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Does he get like all like table he flippy? Kinda, he, I, I don't know. Wait, table flippy, but he does get pretty. He can get pretty forceful when he's talking about stuff. I mean, so so just. So for a different take, creationism is an embarrassment. I don't think it'd be either of these two. Just let me preface what you're about to say. <laughs> yeah. Two of them, if you phoned a friend, or no, wait, what was it on? 50-50. If, yeah, you, if, you, if you, you took a 50-50 lifeline. It wouldn't be these two. Yeah. You don't know who they are. <laughs> uh, but creationism is an embarrassment. A religious superstition that does real harm to children. It's a symptom of willful ignorance and anti-intellectualism that thwarts scientific progress. Now, there's a more level-headed approach, if you can picture one of those people saying it that way. Your choices again, Richard Dawkins, Bill Nye, Aaron Raw, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. All right, so, in, so our number four question is, in the Book of Wisdom, chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, non-believers deny God because, A, Satan has control of you, B, you fear God's power, C, Y'all just want to sin. And D, science and nature has become your God. Now, we hear this kind of stuff from... We can hear this kind of stuff from religious people all the time. Well, religious uh, apologists that... Just real quick, what is the Book of Wisdom? Is that a, a LDS thing? Is that, a, is that an LDS? Is that an LDS? Catholic? I think it's an L Okay, it's, it's, a a catech it's a catechism. In, in Judaism. Okay, so okay. it's part of the catechism, and, and it's a tenet of Judaism. Is that, that's mostly Catholic now, or is it still Jewish? Is that part of the catechism? Oh, it's Jewish. Jewish. Okay. Okay, so the Book of Wisdom is a Jewish thing. So, no, so now I'm back to your point, because I didn't know the context. So, well, no, what I was going to say is, like, so you hear some of this stuff, like, especially that last one, it's like science and nature has become your God. It's like, you hear this, sometimes you hear this from religious apologists that they, they take the position that naturalism, because you are saying, hey, give me anything, give me any bit of evidence that suggests any, there is anything other than the natural world, and then, you know, we may believe, we may start to believe in this, this thing that you're claiming to be that's God or whatever, but they can't provide that. So then they say, oh, because you're not willing to accept the supernatural as an explanation for things, you have made a God or you have made, you know, a deity out of your recognition of the natural world. Yeah, it's just this weird <clears throat> mindset where, like, they can't, not a paint with a very broad brush there, but so many times when you're talking to someone who's religious, they seem incapable of uh, acknowledging the idea of no God, even if they're like spiritual but not religious. You know, it's like, why can't you just not be religious? And so I think that's, you know, from, from the mindset of a bunch of believers, like, you know, that could be like Satan perverting you into like eschewing and getting rid of all gods, but that's kind of different than what atheism is, right? Yeah. So if you're going to deny God, why would you do it? Because Satan has control, because you fear God's power, because... Y'all just want to sin. You atheists, you're just an atheist because you want to sin. <laughs> you just what? love your sin. Oh, you just want to sin. <laughs> I get it now. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a mock, mock southern accent. Kind okay. Of <laughs> I thought it was like a Missouri show me state sort of no. thing. You just want to see it with your own eyes. No. You just want to sin. You just okay. want to sin. Or science has be uh, science and nature has become your god. That would be answer D to question number four. <clears throat> Where were we? Number five. Question five. Uh, question five. Mary had a short memory. Do you remember what question we're on? Ha ha. That's a dumb joke. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> how old was Jesus when Mary chastised him for running away to teach the rabbis in the temple? So the question is, how old was Jesus when Mary chastised him for running away to teach the rabbis in the temple? Was he five, eight? 10 or 12? 12. Give me some help here. Oh. 12. Something like that. Sorry. I had to, oh my gosh. Uh, yes, was he 5, 8, 10, or 12? I don't know. Five year olds, man? Dude, five year olds are, ha have some, some really, have some really uh, uh, audacious uh, viewpoints on uh, worldviews. I mean, it's but, like. Uh, that's a Bible verse, right? Like from the mouth of babes, the truth comes or yeah, something out of like the that? Mouths of babes is that not, or something like that. Is that question six? Oh. It's not no. question six. Uh, 
So yeah, like how old was he? Was he five, eight, 10, or 12? All right, question number six. What are the similarities between a religion and a cult? Unquestioning commitment to their leader, always looking to acquire new members and money, the belief that they are right and everyone else is wrong, or religion and cult are synonyms. <laughs> Answer C is super D. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to start a cult now. Yeah, I can see I because could some, I could use some money acquiring. That's for sure. This is really hard to this is really hard to bullshit about. So. That's pretty brilliant, though. <laughs> <laughs> so can we use that or? Sure. Okay, so are you, was you that know, your? And I, I guarantee you that was the one that Jim was like, man, I hope they see how brilliant this fucking question was right here. <laughs> so we can yeah, move I on don't to, even know what to say on that. That's yeah. just, that's too far above right. my fucking pay grade. In science, a structure of ideas which explain and interpret known facts is called a theory, a scientific law, a, hypo a hypothesis, or a conclusion. So in science, a structure of ideas which explain and interpret known facts is called theory, scientific law, hypothesis, or conclusion. You science wonks out there probably already know. What do you what, what do you have to say about this? Are you a science person? Do you did you like get into like biology and all that mess? Chemistry, uh, reality? Yeah, I mean, I I understand uh, you know, basic tenets of the scientific process and, and scientific method. So, I mean, that was one of the things we got taught in school. I mean, yeah. I was a chemistry guy. I, took a rudimentary physics class. I mean, not like a whole lot of like equations and stuff in that class, but yeah, play with like balls. physical science, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, they definitely taught us uh, the difference between, you know, a law, hypothesis, you know, a hypothesis, a theory, a law, and, you know, a conclusion to, to, to some sort of, you know, proposition or whatever, but. So did they teach you, the viewers at home, the proper definitions of these words? Yeah, that's really what, what all that, that question hinges on, really, is if yep. you have the proper definitions of those words, so yeah. Not really a whole lot you can say or a whole lot you can make fun about science, in my opinion, but yeah. yeah. I mean, it works, right? It works, bitches. Ah, lab coat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number eight. In which holy book can you find the following passage? If there be found among you man or woman who worship other gods, bring them forth and stone them until they are dead. A, the Quran, B, the Old Testament, C, Hadith, or D, the Upanishads. Upanishads is the Buddhist one? I think that's Hindu. The, oh, okay. Well, you have the Vedas and you have the Upanishads, right? They're two different, they're uh, two different uh, se uh, segments to their holy book or whatever. Okay. Something like that. I think so, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, it's it's one of those four, that's for sure. So you got any good Buddhist jokes? A Buddhist walks to a hot dog vendor and says, "Make me one with everything." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, so the three heavens, according to Mormons, are the celestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, and the glorified kingdom, tertiary kingdom, telestial kingdom, and provisional kingdom. Is that telestial? Is that? Yes, I think that's what it says. That's what we're. That's what I'm gonna pronounce it as. Okay. So it's either A, glorified kingdom, B, tertiary kingdom, C, telestial kingdom, or D, provisional kingdom. And there's there's three heavens apparently. I did not realize this. I just thought I thought there were three gods, and that seemed kind of fuzzy to me. Or three aspects to God, or yeah, it's just three yeah. aspects to the heaven. Mormons have three heavens. Mormons have three heavens. See that always. I never. The only thing I can never get past is that the apparently that the the trillions of of planets that are all ruled by individual Mormons that became gods themselves. There's like a su There's like a yeah. there's like a, a like a lower heaven and a medium heaven and a super heaven. <laughs> it's just so funny how we have to drag these religious people kicking and screaming into like modern ways of thinking like like modernity we have to drag them into modernity it's like that's such a, that's such a sticking point for me it's like <laughs> how do we actually convince people and there's so many studies where it's like oh if you present people with facts usually it just drives them mm. more into their belief so well, how just telling people they're wrong is what does that really but how do you do that without facts like yeah
Uh, last and final question, just uh, before we ask this final question, uh, we'll remind you guys, put your guesses in the comments below, and we will shout out the winner of uh, the trivia in number 17 of number 16. So, with that being said, last question, number 10. 74% 74, 74 of college-educated Americans accept evolution. Which percentage, percentage of uneducated Americans accept it? Is it A, 21%, B, 31%, C, 41%, or D, 51%? So there's a lot of numbers in here. <laughs> so 74% of college-educated Americans accept evolution. So that's 74% of people who graduated college. And then, what, what are we calling uneducated Americans? I guess people who didn't graduate from college. No tertiary school. No so, tertiary education, yeah. Okay. Because we consider secondary education in high school. So no tertiary education, meaning no college. So no college. Okay, so of the percentage <clears throat> of people who didn't go to college, how many accept evolution? Yeah. Okay. okay. Which is really, man, that's scary. 26% of, of educated, ter, ter, like college educated people in the United States of America don't accept evolution as fact. 26? Yeah. Well, it'd be the rest yeah. of 74. 26, per, no, 26 percent, no, 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 26 percent don't accept, like, what are the, like, that's scary, but that's scary though, like. Well, on the other hand, if you think about the other answers, that means at best only 49 percent of people who weren't tertiarily educated uh except evolution <laughs> well, <but laughs> or worse yeah like, something worse. like that right <laughs> so then yeah, maybe the so then maybe are... something more to the point would be that like what about the um okay so like 93 percent of the um, members of the national academy of sciences oh, yeah. are atheists essentially so what the scary thing is is that people who are a part of this like illustrious scientific organization who are biologists and cosmologists and things like that seven percent of them don't believe so just to wrap up the question uh which percentage of uneducated uneducated americans accept evolution 21 percent 31 percent 41 percent or 51 percent and as tj said put your answers to these questions in the comments below uh, and the next the winner will be uh, announced on episode 17. That's right. And as always, like, subscribe, bang the bell, because apparently YouTube doesn't care about subscriptions anymore in, in, in letting you know when people drop videos. So do all that stuff. Uh, we'll link the Patreon and, and every way, uh, every other way you can support the channel at the, at the, in the description of the podcast. Uh, and as always, thank you guys for watching. I see a stage. Well, that's something I mean, it's Trump. I mean, oh, yeah. he's gonna fucking he tell him not to do something. He's gonna fucking I'm gonna do get rid it, of that because we're just gonna be walking the edge of what some consider offensive. But your feelings don't matter here. Only facts. This is not the answer. I, to that. I hate, I fucking think the dude's a jackass, but I mean, <laughs> like, he wins sometimes and it's funny. <laughs> Funny. Accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm a pragmatist. <laughs> as long, yeah, as long as he doesn't nuke the country, you know what I'm saying? As long as he doesn't slip up and accidentally push the button on the football or whatever. Edgy commentary on the dangers of doctrine. What do you call your fans? Edge lords. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's the only. <laughs> Welcome, Edge lords. Damn. <laughs> the foibles of faith, the bullshit of belief. Question number seven. In science, a structure of ideas which explain and inter... And God damn it, hell balls. The stupidity of superstition and the idiocy of indoctrination. Interpret. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Lance. With razor sharp wit, curiosity, and critical thought, over there. Scoot that Scoot way. Scoot over, nerd. Okay, that'll work. We take an unblinking look at today's religions. We are Atheist Edge. Y'all just want to sin. You atheists, you're just an atheist because you want to sin.